You've probably been hearing a lot about SatanCon lately, especially from right-wing political commentary and news outlets. We are just here to say that we were there as press. From day one, there was misinformation being spread about SatanCon, so we would like to set the record straight, show that the media, especially right-wing media, is purposely misrepresenting what actually went down there. Just to keep this as above board and provable as possible, uh, here are press passes, and you can see that this was in fact from SatanCon 2023. You still have your wristband on too. <laughs> ah, yes, yeah, I also have that. It should also be said that we are not members of the Satanic Temple. We may be sympathetic to the things that they fight for, but we are not actually members. From the very first day, I was working on collecting all of the misinformation that I saw, especially from major news outlets. I started with just tweets and saw tweets spiral into a whole web of misinformation that was being touted by things like Fox News. <laughs> so I have compiled in a document all the things that I thought worthy to talk about, and I'm going to show them to you. Mm -hmm. Some things you've seen, some things yeah. you haven't. Yeah, I've seen some of this stuff, but not all of it. Hopefully we'll set the record straight by the end of it. All right, starting with the Bible tearing, which is probably the thing that you've seen if you've seen nothing else from SatanCon. This was part of the commencement of the event. Plenty of outlets have said things like, oh, this happened at SatanCon, this happened throughout SatanCon. No, there was not desecration of Christian symbols throughout SatanCon, actually no. not at all. Uh, this was the only time anyone tore up a Bible, except for at the Satanic Planet show, which we'll talk about later. Yeah. Technically not a part of SatanCon. I found that a lot of outlets liked to report on the Bible tearing, <laughs> but said absolutely nothing about why it was done, did not yeah. include any explanation whatsoever. The only outlet that I actually saw, including Shalise Blythe's explanation of the Bible tearing was a local Boston-based mm -hmm. uh, news outlet, which I think it goes to show that local news is often much more yeah. uh, fact-based than, than national and obviously more than political commentary yeah. anywhere. I mean, from a lot of what I've seen, it's, yeah, it's like they're showing footage of the Bible tearing. And of course, like, they're showing a lot of footage of the Hail Satan, you know, because like they want to show whatever is like seems the most out there. Right. At SatanCon in Boston, this is expected to be the largest gathering of self-described Satanists, and it has been sold out for weeks. There are over 800 attendees coming here to see a variety of presentations, as well as different events. There are also a number of people who have gathered outside of Marriott Copley Place, where this is being held to protest the event. The people that are attending this event say that they don't actually worship Satan, but they do believe in central tenets that include personal freedom like the freedom of religion. For me personally, I see Satan as completely representative of not only my inherent outsider uh, status that I've always had, but also representative of me as, as a woman that does not adhere to society's expectations of me. It pretty much is kind of doing that. It's like, hey, we're here and we're not going anywhere kind of a thing. So ripping up a Bible, it is destroying a symbol that is meant to take our rights away. People misunderstand Satanism as being against Christianity. It's not a statement against Christianity, it is a statement against the symbol that is most used to cause the most harm. It's us kind of taking that symbol, destroying it as a way of saying we are no longer going to take your impositions and we are no longer going to take your oppression, and this is a symbolic act of that. So as you can see, while this was inflammatory, this was not actually an anti-Christian statement. Yeah. In fact, one of the founders of TST, Malcolm Jerry, has even said 
that you could actually be a Christian and be a part of the Satanic Temple because it's mm -hmm. not inherently anti-Christian or even anti-believing in a god. Yeah. It is... Anti-tyranny. Yeah. Of course, if you disagree with the way that they made this statement, sure, I get it, but you can't say that this was something meant to intimidate Christians mm -hmm. like many outlets have begun to say. Yeah. Now, Ben Shapiro has started to say that the Satanic Temple is all about destroying literally all tradition. Kind of hilarious what? given that they are beginning their own traditions, right? Yeah, I was right? going to say, the, the Satanic Temple has a lot of tradition and ritual in itself. Right. So why would they want to destroy all tradition? Well, it's not a part of traditional culture, they might say. <laughs> but again, if you actually listen to Shalice and you listen to other people at TST, no, they're not actually trying to destroy traditional culture. Traditional culture can, can continue to exist. Mm -hmm. It's that they don't want to be forced into traditional culture. Right. That's literally it. Right. And so when I say that Satanism is now diffused through the society, again, I don't mean that people worship Satan. I mean that in the original, original sense, if you read the Bible, like the original Hebrew Bible, when it talks about Satan, it's talking about the adversary. The adversary in Jewish philosophy is supposed to be a messenger of God who, who sort of plays almost prosecuting attorney against man. But the idea of being adversarial toward religion has now been taken up by all of our society, which is how you get to the cultural predations that we currently see, in which all traditional ideas have to be torn down. Now, I will mention the cowardice of the people over the city. Yeah, he's saying that all traditions, all culture outside of theirs must be torn down, which is literally the opposite of the point. Yeah. I think that he knows that. Oh, yeah, he definitely knows that. Yeah, but this goes against his idea of complete dominion. Traditionalism must rule over all or it's not worth anything. So I'd also like to play you this next statement of Shapiro's. Tang Temple, I noticed one thing they were not doing is ripping the pages out of Quran. Right, they're, they're very fond of ripping pages out of Bibles because they know that Christians are going to be totally fine with it and, and don't care and are annoyed, but, but let it go. You rip the pages out of a Quran and see how it goes for you over at SatanCon 2023. But he's saying that Christians will be totally fine with them ripping pages out of the Bible. And there's so many Christians that have been completely outraged by that. Yeah. And also, yeah, they're ripping pages out of the Bible because TSD is prim primarily in the U.S. And what is the biggest power in the U.S.? It's Christianity. Yeah. And it, TSD is all about, like, taking down a, the oppressor. And in America, the oppressor is Christianity. Right. Not Islam. Right. Andrew Tate also made that point that Shapiro did. Try the Quran if you're so brave in response to Shalise ripping the Bible. Shalice actually responded to this, and I think that you will probably like her answer. I live in 2023 America. It is not a siege of Muslim politicians using the Quran as justification to pass anti-LGBTQ laws or Jewish theocrats citing the Torah to take away our rights to reproductive health. It's evangelical theocracy that is a threat to myself and others. It's their commandments being forced into our schools, their bigotry, racism being used as weapons to kill LGBTQ and BIPOC communities, their hatred of women that forces us to reproduce against our wills. That is why I choose their source of self-righteous justification to destroy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Basically what you said. And yeah. if you are able to put yourself in their shoes, see it from their perspective, then the answer to why they're not ripping up a Quran is pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. However, I would like to note that ex-Muslims are now uh, in, I guess, solidarity with this in a way, or maybe just taking up uh, Andrew Tate's challenge, ripping up Qurans. This is Armin Navabi, who uh, started the Atheist Republic, ex-Muslim ripping up a Quran. There have been many other ex-Muslims yeah. posting videos like this on Twitter. And it makes sense for him to be doing that because he's lived under Islamic tyranny before. Right. So, like, that makes sense. Yeah, I totally get it. Fox News just the other day asked Lucian Greaves if this was something that they did in schools. This is what they wanted to do in schools with parents' consent. Yeah, but, I mean, I saw you guys ripping up the Bible what is your objective with people in general? I, I mean, I would assume y'all would be doing the same thing with children um, with the consent of their parents. It, it, this discussion has nothing to do with the after school Satan clubs, just to make clear. What I find really funny here is that the only discussion of kids in schools that I heard at SatanCon was a discussion of how to keep religious 
uh, school board members from instituting rules that would allow them to hit students. Mm -hmm. It was, in fact, one of the very first events just following that Bible tearing, talking about uh, how their campaign of keeping corporal punishment out of schools has gone. And uh, unfortunately, it is a real thing that school boards are actually still allowing, if you can believe that. For example, Castle in Missouri, who decided to, uh, in fall of 2022, decided to reinstate corporal punishment into their school districts. And if you continue watching that interview, um, there was a point where the host, I'm not sure what his name is, but he was asking Lucian, like, are you ripping up Bibles? Are you doing this so that your God, which is Satan, will reward you? And it's like Lucian has been on Fox News for years mm-hmm. and has specified that TST is a non-theistic religion. And yet they're still insisting that it that they worship the devil. Yeah. It's like obviously they have some sort of agenda or narrative that they're trying to push and they just don't care about what the truth is. Right. All right, moving on to claims of souls saved. This one... I I have heard of this. Yeah, yeah. you'll find this amusing. (laughs) The first tweets that I saw about this were from this account, Anna. Some photos from hashtag SatanCon in Boston this weekend. So many souls were saved and found Jesus. Hallelujah. God bless the pastors and evangelists who flew out there to minister and snatch souls for the kingdom of God. What I find really funny about this tweet (laughs) is that the guy in the top left... Later, you'll actually see him in another photo, which was taken after this, showing that he was involved with the thing. He was still attending. He, this was not someone whose soul was saved. Now, this next person, top right, this person also continued to attend SatanCon. I saw them on the very last day. I'm not sure if I spoke to them or not, but I do remember seeing them around the conference. Clearly, they did not abandon the whole thing. All right, bottom left. Literally, no one in this picture is a Satan kind of Yeah, attendee. that just looks like a group of protesters or people that were there to pray or whatever. It just yeah. looks like they're praying. People from Satan Con that were attending have a pretty distinct look. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and bottom right, that guy was literally just chilling in the restaurant when they took that picture from behind. He may oh, not right. even know that they took that picture yeah. of him. And uh, we actually sat by him for an extended period of time while we were working on some video stuff while we were there. Um, pretty cool jacket. But yeah, the guy, is, the guy is still a Satanist. Yeah. And like, that's kind of how rude is that to just take a picture of someone's back so you can put it on social media and claim that they've been converted to Christianity? Oh, it gets it gets much better. Wait for this one. Here's another tweet of Anna's. Brother Ricky led a kingpin of the satanic order to Jesus. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, you know, looks like they're having a conversation. Maybe it was an okay conversation, given that they are uh, shaking hands. You scroll down, you see, to clarify, I misunderstood the text from my friend, Brother Ricky, sent me. (laughs) This young man did hear the gospel, but he didn't give his life to Jesus just yet. But the seed was planted. (laughs) Keep praying for his soul. God is so good. You keep going down and you see this guy at the Satanic Planet show hugging one of the performers who simulated sex with another Satanist on stage. It gets better, though. You keep going down and... She says she clarified her tweet, but she didn't remove it. Yeah, that's what I'm like. It is good that she at least clarified, but she should have probably removed the tweet altogether because some people are just going to see that and they're not going to read through the comments and they're going to be like, oh my God, like a kingpin, whatever that means, of TSD was converted to Christianity. I would completely agree with you. And you know what? So does the so-called kingpin of the satanic order, actually. So I thought I'd do this as a video response because... (laughs) I think this post is quite interesting. Not because of the post itself, because of the person who has posted it. I have messaged this person, and it's in the comments, that the information on this is false. I was not converted, I was just chatting to a bloke, had a nice time, he was okay. And I've told this person who has posted this that I have not been converted, and that the information on this is incorrect. But instead of removing the post, as an honest person would, because an honest person would realise that this is false. Instead, they have decided to keep this post up on Twitter, knowing that it is incorrect. So this person 
is genuinely lying to you. And they know that they are lying because they have been told that they are incorrect. Can you trust a person who keeps up a post that they know is incorrect? Truth from the kingpin himself. Mm -hmm. Now, going on to even bigger claims, and if you've heard anything about SatanCon from Christians, besides for the Bible ripping, I would guess that this is what you've heard. Sean Foyt claimed that 98 souls were saved at SatanCon. While they were ripping up pages of the Bible to kick off the largest satanic gathering, SatanCon in Boston, over 98 attendees surrendered their lives to Jesus, verified <laughs> from covert evangelists infiltrating the crowd, hashtag God always wins. 98 attendees and it's been verified yeah no that's a straight out lie that's yeah. a straight out lie first of all they're really from what drew and i saw and we weren't at the conference the entire time but a big a large part of the time we were there and we were interviewing protesters ourselves there weren't really a lot of people from the conference going out to talk to the protesters there'd be a couple here and there mm -hmm. It seemed like the protesters were mostly just talking to each other. Yeah. So I did see a few people getting delivered of presumably evil spirits or vices or something like that. But every single person that I saw praying with someone or like bowing down or being delivered was a person who they themselves showed up to protest Satan. Con. Right. Yeah. It was literally evangelists from one church or one congregation or one group talking to and praying over and delivering other people from other groups who were Christian yeah. that showed up for the exact same reason. And that might have made it seem to some that some people were converting, but no, I haven't seen a single actual verified case of any Satanist being yeah. converted there whatsoever. And here's another thing, too, is that a lot of the protesters were filming. There were several protesters that seemed like they were live streaming to like Facebook mm -hmm. or something. If 98 attendees out of 800, 800. so one-eighth <laughs> of the attendees of SatanCon were converted, don't you think you would have caught, like, at least one or two of those on camera? Yeah. As if you're filming everything. Like, there was several instances where we were trying to do interviews, and the protesters were, like, getting in our shot when we were, like, conducting the interview, and I would have to tell them to move out of the way. Like, with they were their, filming the whole time. With their own time. cameras, right. Like, really, if this actually happened, don't you think there'd be some footage of it? And yet? I, would you call but it's this, verified. Would you call this verified? No. <laughs> it's, it's, uh And it's Sean Foyt, he's, like, some big, big dude, like, some big guy. Yes. Sean Foyt is a self- uh, admitted Christian nationalist who leads Christian worship in state capitol buildings in order to usher in an age where Christians rule the government completely. That's why we get called. Well, you're Christian nationalists. You want, you want the kingdom to be the government. Yes. You want God to come and overtake the government. Yes. You want Christians to be the only ones. That yes, we do. <laughs> We wouldn't be a disciple of Jesus if we didn't believe that. We want God to be in control of everything. We want believers to be the ones writing the laws. Yes, guilty as charged. Now, we started with Anna saying that a kingpin had been converted and that several people had been converted. And you get Sean Foyt a little bit later, maybe the same day or the day after. So we're talking like late Saturday night, maybe early Sunday morning. Uh, this number is inflated to 98. But then you go to Fox News, which dropped on Tuesday, and they report that over 120 were saved rather than 98. Chris Kubal, chief program officer of somewhere in Virginia, told Fox News Digital that their sources on the ground claim that there were approximately 120 conversions to Christianity attributable to evangelism efforts at the venue. They were not necessarily all Satanists, but uh, apparently some were. The number grows as you go on in time. This is the hallmark of a myth. This is the telephone game. Exactly. This is literally how that works. Yeah. So you have Sean Foyt saying that there were 98 verified attendees who were converted. And then this one is saying there's 120 
But they weren't all Satanists, but there were some. I can guarantee you, well, I mean, I don't know for sure. It's possible maybe there were a few people that we didn't see who were converted. But I highly, highly doubt that. I am pretty sure that not one Satanist was converted to Christianity. Yeah. And if you are genuinely trying to convert people to your religion, harassing and screaming at them with megaphones is probably not the way to do it. Now, they do specify in this article that our approach was very different from what you may have seen on the news. They claimed that they infiltrated the crowd. They got into the hotel despite security trying to keep them out, which we saw plenty of people getting in in trouble for harassing people Mm -hmm. multiple times. And uh, yeah, they, they covertly snuck in and that's where the conversions happened. I personally saw less than a handful of times where someone where a Satanist was talking with someone that was not from the conference without a security guard coming over the Satanist saying, thank you for getting them away from me. They're harassing me. Yeah. So this is I think this is incredibly dubious. I want to highlight this bit. This guy that's reporting all these uh, conversions says their whole goal is to intimidate Christians like they're going to rip up the Bible to intimidate us. Yeah. And like we already explained, ripping up the Bible had nothing to do with intimidating or being anti-Christian. It had to do with destroying symbols of oppression. Yeah. And it's kind of ironic to me that this guy saying that when TST just holds a conference all they do is have their annual conference and people fly in from all over the country to protest it to say that they are being persecuted by the fact that satanists are even because they have one conference a year meanwhile i mean there's church every sunday people aren't showing up to churches to protest it. literally the same weekend that satan con happened there was this big like men's church retreat where I was showing this to Drew earlier, where like their main entertainment was uh, like a tank rolled out from a stage and had a guy shooting like an AR-15 out of it. And like the tank was rolling over cars. Like that was their main entertainment. And like that happened the same weekend, but people aren't going to protest and like harass people at that event. Yeah. Who is trying to intimidate who in this situation? Because it definitely, from my perspective, as being someone that attended SatanCon... Definitely seems like the Christians are trying to intimidate the Satanists. Yeah. Speaking of protesters, and we will circle back to the intimidation bit, let's discuss the first bit of protest that happened, which was the Catholic procession that went from, I believe, the center of town in Boston all the way to SatanCon. There were, it looked like a hundred, maybe more Catholics Mm -hmm. all marching, holding Catholic symbols and uh, chanting, praying, that kind of thing. I want you to pay special attention to what their signs say. Satanism is not a religion, but an attack against God. So the Satanic Temple is officially recognized by the IRS and therefore the U.S. government as an official religion. Mm -hmm. They do not like that because it gives them protections. Mm. They see it as an attack against God, no matter how many Satanists explain what it actually is. Yeah. The Satanic Temple is holding a public weekend of blasphemy at the Boston Marriott Hotel. This public sin calls for public reparation. Satan is evil. Evil has no rights. They are they're literally saying that they want to take rights away from people of another religion. Exactly. And yet they are the ones that are being persecuted. We cannot remain silent about this deliberate attack against God, the Catholic Church, America, and the family. They're saying that Satanism directly attacks them. Satanism, TST Satanism is literally about leave me alone. Let me do my own thing. Exactly. And nothing more. Don't infringe on my rights. Exactly. And don't try to push your religion or beliefs on me. Right. There was another sign that said, one nation under God excludes Satanism. Yeah, let's see if we can find that. I saw that. It was like in the beginning. 
Yeah. One nation under God excludes Satanism. Yeah. All of their signs directly say we want to take away rights from this group of people because they don't believe the same thing we do. Right. And but oh, sorry, it makes me so mad because it's like, but yet we're the ones that are persecuting you. We're not showing up outside of your church with signs that say one nation under Satan excludes Catholicism. Like, ugh, makes me mad. As soon as we walked into SatanCon, we noticed that there were several protesters being stopped by police and security guards. Find Jesus, guys! We must repent! 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 Find God! Find God! Find God! So guys, that's what happens. Um, got, got mobbed really quick, but uh, a message has to be, has to be heard, has to be given. Um, yeah, that's really all I know to say. Repent! Repent and find God! Jesus loves you! Accept him! He is the way, the truth, the lie! So, we're getting trespassed, but it doesn't matter because it's the message of the Lord. That's all that matters. That's all that matters. We must keep spreading the Lord. I have some shows. You're the wrong way. I'm just trying to ask questions. Get the fuck away from me. Why are you so angry? Get the fuck away. I'm just trying to ask you questions. You there and you were causing problems. That wasn't me. That was my twin brother. And we overheard as, as we were walking by, no, you can't harass. Yes, you can have conversations with people, but if they deny you, if they reject you, you have you to leave them alone. Yeah, you have you to stop. Them. You've been told multiple times, yeah, you can't stalk them. You can't harass them, I believe is what the, yeah. the officer said. And uh, there's this clip here from this apparently popular comedian that I had not heard of, but I think this really captures the spirit of not all the protesters, but several who were told to stop harassing. This is a convention for what? Please stop recording, sir. What is it for? This is private property. Yeah. For Satan? Um, <laughs> like, sir, you don't know private property. You know, no, but I'm dying. Wait, this is a Satan for Satan? Like, sir, I'm, uh, sir, this is private property. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. Are you guys with the devil? Are you guys with the devil? Oh, all right. Yes? All right. I don't know how that works. I'm just I'm doing a documentary. So what does it mean? What does it mean if you're with the devil? Oh, she's out of here. All right. Well, take care. Sorry, guys. Try my best. Can you what? No, you can't fucking wash my feet. But I, I mean, no, you're not. No, no, I, I'll get somebody else to do it. Thank you, though. Thank you. Glory, hallelujah, he has set me free, I'm not touching this shit, I'm not touching this shit, I'm not touching this shit, I can't, what do you want me to do, well I can't, I can't, I'm not getting involved with these fucking kooks, oh the devil, you're not with the devil people, I'm just kidding, this, uh, this guy's a comedian, yeah, what's, what's the joke, the joke is, you're with Satan, ha 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 ha, the joke this is, is the if you're different. <laughs> yeah, if you're different then you suck. Uh, the I don't I don't really understand what is so funny about going up to someone and they're saying, "Please stop recording me, sir." And people are getting up and moving away from you. Yeah. They're clearly uncomfortable with you shoving a camera in their face and asking yeah. them questions I to try to trap them somewhere. So, I I hadn't seen this before. I felt so badly for those two people that were just sitting at the bar and like got up and left cuz this person was shoving a camera in their face and wouldn't leave them alone. Like they're just trying to relax and get a beer and just have a good time and they literally have to leave because they're being harassed. Yeah. But no, yeah. The satanists are the ones that are oppressing and persecuting everybody else. Right. How often do you see Satanists going into churches with cameras, asking people pointed questions and harassing them? No, that doesn't happen. Churches don't even really have to have security, unlike SatanCon, which had... Do you think that it would be an exaggeration to say they had at least two dozen security guards in the hotel? No, I think that there was probably more than that because it seemed like they had like a hired security company mm -hmm. and then also there were a, was a very large police presence. Constantly. I'll click off this video, but I want to give a shout out to the security guard that's in mm -hmm. this video. Uh, he was kind of one of the main people that was in a choke point so that mm -hmm. like you had to get past him in order to go up to the actual conference. So he had many run-ins with people. Yeah. Very nice guy, st like stood up for everyone that was there. And I mean, I thanked him in person, but again, I don't know if we'll see this video, but 
man, thank you so much for being willing to put yourself in harm's way, even though I know it's your job for people who are on the margins of society. Mm -hmm. We appreciate that. Now, you haven't seen this, although you did see the guy that uh, filmed this. There was actually conflict outside of SatanCon, and not a single Satanist was involved. (laughs) You reject what God says. You reject what God says. Try to obey the God of the Bible. Try to obey the God of the Bible. Aggressor! Back off! Aggressor! That's you guys. Mother Teresa is burning in hell. Time for you to repent or you will say, be burning in hell. There is no purgatory. There is no purgatory. You may lie to. You get the idea. Yeah. Going to Satan Con, that was kind of what I was expecting, was that the people that would end up fighting would be like the different denomination or like the different sects of Christianity fighting with each other. And actually, uh, I don't think that it escalated to the point where police had to be involved. Mm -hmm. However, in the first Satan con that was in Scottsdale, Arizona last year, uh, police did have to be called because the Catholics and the evangelicals got into like a physical altercation. Oh my God. Satanists were never involved. No Satanists ever got in trouble. It was only the protesters that showed up to... Uh, well, should I say persecute them? <laughs> okay, getting into Patriot Front and the Proud Boys showing up. They did actually get in. A lot of security guards, a lot of police officers tried to keep them out, but they came in pretty large numbers and did get in. Uh, I don't believe that at any point they ever actually got up to the floor where the conference was on, but they were in the bar where people were. At one point, conference organizers told us, do not go to the second floor. Patriot Mm -hmm. Front and the Proud Boys are everywhere in the building, and we don't know what's going to happen. Shortly after that, I know that at least one assault happened. One person was assaulted. The organizers did not let us know who that was, which is probably good. Yeah. Well, we don't necessarily need to know their identity. I don't know if it was another protester. I really wouldn't be surprised. It could have been a Satanist. I wouldn't be surprised at that either. And uh, at least one man was also found armed. Lucian Greaves, the one of the founders of TST, actually said that this resulted in the arrest of someone from the Proud Boys or Patriot Front. Let's oh, wow. see. So Patriot Front showed up after missing his lecture I hear they came armed just to predictably get arrested. They don't come stupider. (laughs) Uh, Yeah, I'm not really sure what they were intending on doing with their firearms in that building. But it's like, did they have an end goal in mind with that? Or are they just trying to be scary? Or I would guess that they were primarily there just to intimidate. However, they are kind of conspiracy theorists mm-hmm. they they probably thought they were going to walk into the building and see child sacrifice and the illuminati you know working magic or something and instead they show up and they see a bunch of like metal heads and nerds <laughs> like talking about romantic literature and like behemoth and ghost and <laughs> yeah. stuff like that it was pretty scary for me at one point when we were in like the bar restaurant where a lot of people were hanging out in the hotel and there was like some I'm pretty sure someone from the Proud Boys standing like right next to us. Yeah. And that was scary for me. So Lucian Greaves, one of the founders of TST, has a band, an industrial metal band called Satanic Planet. We went to that show and protesters, the ones that were saying that Mother Teresa is burning in hell, followed uh, mm-hmm. people from the conference to the venue, which was completely across town and were very loudly harassing people standing in line outside the show. Yeah. I heard that you have a video of that yeah, that we can check out. Something to we should also mention is that the show was not like directly affiliated or part of the conference. Right. Um obviously most of the temple people like showed up, but anyone could have shown up to the show. Yeah, it was a totally separate venue. Yeah, 
Yeah, so at, at one point, uh, the protesters were saying something about, like, if you masturbate, you're going to go straight to hell. And or... that you were, a, like, a groomer if you masturbate. Yeah, and so all of the people in line for the show started, like, chanting, masturbate, masturbate. <laughs> <laughs> it was actually pretty fun, not going to lie, but until uh, some police were called and showed up, yeah. it was a bit nerve-wracking. I was worried that some kind of altercation might start because they wouldn't like get out of somebody's face. But Yeah, and there was no security or any or police at all. Right. Eventually, a police car did show up, and there were a couple of officers that were standing near them. Um, it's, a, it's a good thing that these, these guys uh, that protest tend to really like the police, mm. or else I don't know what would have happened. <laughs> On to discussion of sex and gender that people have been putting out there. On the first or second day of the conference, Ollie London, a famous detransitioner and anti-trans spokesperson, tweeted that TST worships Satan and a transgender demon, Baphomet, had trans speakers and had a sins of the flesh talk. Now let's discuss each of those points one by one. Taylor, does TST worship satan oh god this is so fucking basic but no <laughs> do they worship a transgender deity baphomet no they do not worship a transgender deity named baphomet i'd also like to say that uh baphomet as a symbol which does have male and female attributes to it far predates the entire concept the modern concept of transgender mm -hmm. like there was no transitioning for Baphomet or the uh, the people who were at least accused of worshiping him, the Knights Templar, back in the Middle Ages. Yes, I there were people that were other genders besides male and female, because that has always existed. But this demon and its image was never any sort of commentary on people transitioning or even humans being gender nonconforming. It simply meant to represent duality. That's all. So to call it a, a transgender deity is so anachronistic, it's painful. The event features multiple transgender speakers speaking on subjects including, I'll say yes, there were multiple transgender yeah. speakers. I wonder why in an organization which is about being an outsider, mm -hmm. about having been put forced to the margins of society, why there would be multiple transgender people in that organization. Hmm. That's very curious, huh? Maybe it's because this organization accepts people who have been marginalized right. as opposed to mainstream organizations, which almost unanimously just directly spew hatred and vitriol and persecution at trans people. Mm -hmm. There are few religious communities where trans people get any sort of platform, much less are even allowed in. So excuse the satanic temple if they have transgender people speaking about their experiences when the whole thing is about how we can overcome persecution right. together. And I will also say that the sins of the flesh talk, that speaker I don't believe was transgender. No, he was not trans. And I actually have his information pulled up here. Dr. Eric Sprankle is an associate professor at Minnesota State University. He is a cis man. He is a clinical psychologist, an associate professor. He studies sexuality and he teaches in the undergraduate program there at his university. His presentation was about what different traditions throughout time, Judeo and Christian, had to say about masturbation. Basically, they have various forms of shaming it. Mm -hmm. And then he talked about how Satanism has a different outlook on it, which is actually science-based. He was an actual researcher mm -hmm. discussing things from a scientific perspective. And it turned out that the research does not support the idea that masturbation is actually unhealthy socially or mentally mm -hmm. or spiritually or in any other way. Yeah. It is, it is only traditions that say that it is harmful. The data does not actually say that. That was the point of the talk. It was not yeah. saying, oh, you should go and just masturbate as much as you possibly can because that's the point of life. Yeah. Or there wasn't any like public demonstrations or how to <laughs> on how to masturbate. No. And this is a good example of like how a lot of the talks were like this were very academic. Yeah. And educational. And I just thought it was really funny 
that the protesters were so convinced that we're in there like casting spells and having orgies Mm -hmm. and all that kind of stuff. And meanwhile, like there's just people in a conference room listening to someone give a lecture. Yeah. Michael Knowles, who is a right wing political commentator and I believe a part of the Daily Wire, made a pretty harsh claim. These guys or or even to feel a, a great deal of pity for them. Because you think, oh, these are just a bunch of misfit weirdos dressing up in, in goat horns and making the rock, the rock and roll symbol, and it's no big deal. But they're promoting pretty bad stuff. I mean, transing, the, castrating children, that's, that's not great. That's a bad thing to promote. When did they ever promote that? I actually didn't hear any discussion at all. Now, again, I didn't go to every single presentation, but I didn't hear any even insinuation, no, and there was no inkling of a conversation about transitioning children, much less mm-hmm. castrating children. Yeah. First of all, gender affirming care is not castrating kids. Minors are not having their penises cut off. That is just straight up not happening, period. Mm-hmm. That is an exaggeration. Now, if you want to talk about actually having kids transition, this is a completely different conversation than cutting a boy's penis off. And he knows this. Yeah. First of all, the number of kids who are actually receiving gender affirming care, at least in the U.S., is so much smaller than they act like it is. I think that we're talking about less than five digits per year. That is a tiny, tiny fraction of the U.S. population. And yet they act like this is some massive epidemic. I'll show some numbers here from a recent study so that you guys can see what I'm talking about. And in most cases, the overwhelming amount of cases, it's to literally save that child's life. Because gender dysphoria can be a life-threatening thing. Yeah. It can make you suicidal. Mm-hmm. Very severely so. I used to be in social work and I've worked with kids who are in these situations. It's not something to take lightly. This can be life-saving care for kids. It's a complex situation and people like Michael Knowles like to bring up you know, things like castrating kids as much as they possibly can because this makes people angry. Mm -hmm. It does sound really scary that people might be castrating kids. Yeah. Yeah, I'd be scared if I thought that that was actually happening. Yeah, but that's that's not happening. Right. You know, you think they'd discuss something that's actually happening, like kids getting their school lunches taken away in very uh, food unstable environments. Maybe they could talk about child poverty. Maybe they could talk about... The number of children here who are not receiving adequate health care because our health care system is so shot. But instead, they make up conspiracy theories about trans kids who are already persecuted just for existing. Michael Knowles is not the only person who would not stop talking about Satanists, you know, loving to force transitioning on on kids. Uh, Ben Shapiro discussed multiple times in his response to Satan Khan, how the Satanists believe in transgenderism. And every time he brought that up, he had to mention children. He had to say Mm -hmm. they believe in transing kids as if Satanists are in there promoting making kids transition. The freedoms of others should be respected, including the freedom to offend. To willfully and unjustly encroach upon the freedoms of another is to forego one's own. Well, the Satanic Temple presumably does not believe totally in the freedoms of others because they're obviously very much pro-abortion, they're in favor of the transing of the children, and all the rest. Beliefs should conform to one's best scientific understanding of the world. One should take care never to distort scientific facts to fit one's belief, says, once again, the Satanic Temple that is called the Satanic Temple and also is uh, is a backer of abortion and transgenderism among children. Like the same classes being taught at SatanCon are now taught in third grade at public schools across the nation. And why, why gender is, is a spectrum? Why you should be able to trans the kids? The actual position that it seems to me everyone in TST has is if someone has gender dysphoria, if someone is suffering and transitioning will be an adequate medical treatment to help them with that, then they should be able to transition and we should accept them. And I think the most important thing they probably say is if someone is experiencing gender dysphoria or transitions or whatever, we should allow them to do what is going to be best for them by their own judgment. And we should back the fuck off. Mm -hmm. Just accept them, love them, show them acceptance regardless of who they are or what they look like. Right. As a kid, I was taught that that was a Christian value. 
I rarely see that as a Christian value no. today. And no. it's very ironic that Satanists are so good at displaying it now. So that is all of the misinformation that I came across. There is almost definitely more out there because falsehoods, misinformation, definitely spread faster than actual factual information, faster than truth. But hopefully this helped to shed some light on what actually happened at SatanCon. Now, I wanted to ask you, aside from all this stuff surrounding it, from the ridiculousness of protesters and all of that, how was your experience at SatanCon? It was really, really good. I think it was probably the best conference I've ever been to. <laughs> Everything I, I saw there was so positive. I would agree with that. And I've been to many, I've been to all of the major atheist conferences and several smaller ones. Not every atheist conference that goes on annually. This was, you know, not exactly an atheist convention. It was Satanist. It's actually a religious organization. But when it came to the demographics that were there, First of all, you saw all age groups, which is mm -hmm. not a thing at atheist conferences. Atheist conferences are usually people over the age of 40. Yeah. And there are yeah. people younger than that, but not very many. There were a lot of people our age yeah. there, which was really encouraging to yeah, see. Yeah, tons. They also, yes, had trans people, but there were LGBTQ people of all kinds everywhere, very visible. There were probably some straight people there too. Uh, and it was just nice to see so many different people from so many different uh, minority groups of different kinds all come together and just band together to support each other and work towards something that benefits not only them and their groups, but I would say society as a whole. Mm -hmm. Because if Satanism can be protected under the Constitution and in our courts, then that means that any minority faith or minority group can be protected as well and satanists acknowledge this this is why there are so many so many minorities in satanism lastly how do you think everything ran like logistics wise time wise um, i yeah everything was very went very very smoothly and i think that was a big accomplishment considering the amount of protesters and people that were trying to in infiltrate and do whatever they were going to do i mean everything went really great yeah it, it's honestly amazing that everything could even run on time and that everyone was safe the whole time mm -hmm. given what was happening yeah. so tst organizers massive accomplishment i think you already know that but bravo with that i'll bring this video to a close i may have another satan con video coming up where i am basically interviewing the protesters and then interviewing satan con attendees to test the religious literacy of each group um after watching this all the way to the end, I can imagine that you have an idea how that went, what the result of that will be. But, okay, I'll go ahead and do a send-off, some footage that we took while we were there. Thanks for watching, guys. Again, thanks for watching. I've been Drew of Genetically Modified Skeptic. A special thanks to my patrons for their constant love and support. If you want to hear more from me, then subscribe. If you are an apostate in need, there are resources linked in the description to help you find community and mental health support. Remember to be kind to others in the comments, and until next time, Stay skeptical.